Hey guys, welcome back to Get Out Alive Survival. My name is Chris, really appreciate you guys stopping by. So, I've been promising to do the uh, second half of that bug out bag video that um, I posted up a week or two ago. So, bag still has a couple things I would like to add to it and, and could put with it, but we're still gonna go over the internals of it, just look at what's already here. Um, I'll probably do another video. Um, once the bag is completely loaded out and I have everything in it I want it put in there and uh, I'll just do like a revised um, video showing you guys the final product and everything that's in it. So today I'm going to focus on the internals. If you haven't seen the first video, go back and watch uh, Bug Out Bag Basics number one. Um, that's going to cover all the exterior parts of the bag. I went over that in detail in that video. One thing I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to take this out just so later on it's easier to get to some of these compartments. And I did not ever show you the knife that I have on the outside of the pack. This is a Smith & Wesson uh, bayonet. It is a great survival utility knife. It has um, straps on it here and with the molly webbing it's easy to attach it to the bag. A lot of different configurations on how you can set this up. Um, the back of the sheath right here has this snap closure you can open up. It actually has a sharpening stone built right into the sheath so you can do maintenance in the field. Um, on the blade, that's built right in. It uh, doesn't come out so that stays safe back there whenever, for whenever you need it. Um, the knife itself, like I said, it's a bayonet style knife. Smith & Wesson. It's a very solid knife. Um, good guard here on it to keep your hand from slipping up on it. It's got the uh, serrations here on the back of it. Nice thing, the blade itself is all straight edge, so that makes maintaining it in the field a lot easier. Um, it's got kind of a, a harder um, handle than some of the other bayonets, so it's not quite as slip resistant as some of those. It is textured to help keep your hand from sliding around. With a pair of gloves on, it's, uh, it's pretty easy to keep control of. But um, I just wanted to show you guys the knife in case you were wondering what I had on there. There's a lot of different um, knives you can attach to this bag. Uh, bushcraft, survival, whatever um, knife you choose is the best fixed blade for you will fit easily into this molly webbing. So I've taken some stuff off that I went over in the first video um, just to make it easier to get to some of these compartments. Um, one thing I'll cover again real quick, I have this out, but uh, first aid kit. Uh, essential for um, any camping, day hike, any bag. You're going to want to have this with you always, not just um, worst case scenario survival. This is going to be something you want to have with you all the time. Um, stuff that you can treat, minor cuts and abrasions and, and things like that, is going to make a huge difference, help reduce the risk of infection. Um, pain relievers, things like that. Just anything that if you run into on a day hike that you weren't expecting, the more prepared you are, the better. So that's everything on the outside of the bag. Uh, a couple things I've, I've got out just for ease of, of getting to. One thing you're going to want to have, whether you're camping, bushcrafting, survival, whatever the situation is, you want to have some kind of cookware set. Something that you can, if nothing else, just boil water in. Um, the you know stuff that you don't think you're going to need will all of a sudden become very important once you're out there without it. So this is just a um, stainless steel cookware set. It has um, this mesh bag that it comes with. Let me just slide this out of here real quick. It's got this mesh bag so that you can keep everything together because it is a two-piece set and the lid does not attach so it helps keep that from sliding off. It's a pretty tight fit so it's not it's not real easy to get in and out of the of the cookware, but like I said, stainless steel. You've got a lid. It's got a little latch here on the top of it. You can use a stick or a, a poker to take the lid off on a fire if you've got boiling water. You've got a couple different um, size pans in here. You've got this smaller on the inside, and then you've got this larger, I believe this is around a, a four or five quart um, pan right here. Handles, it's got the rubberized grips on them. 
but that is great to have with you if you want to boil water um, if you have stuff with you that you're gonna that you're gonna cook if you've got those camp ready meals or anything that you're gonna need to add hot water to for them to cook in the package these are a very easy way They're lightweight um, I am going to in the future upgrade to the newer titanium cookware sets uh, they'll hold up better in the long run but the stainless steel is fine those are pretty durable and will get the job done just fine so first compartment we're going to start off with here is the top of the bag i'm going to move you guys closer so you can see the bag better this is going to be all right that should work great so i'm going to start here with this top compartment first thing fire steel um, if you watch my last video, the camp out video, I've got this in there. This is a strike force. Um, fire steel has a lanyard that holds the two pieces together. You have your striker in this section and then your fire steel here. This is seated well in the plastic handle so that you can get down and, and um, strike close to your fire. And the lanyard helps keep everything together so that you do not lose your um, striker or fire steel either part nice bright orange so you can see it um, a lot less chance of it getting lost on the ground if you lay it down but fire steel i cannot emphasize enough how important that is to have on a any survival or outdoor kit fire starting is going to be one of your biggest um, concerns if you're in a survival situation you're going to want to be able to have confidence and the ability to start a fire you know pretty quickly and easily i'm going to do a, a fire starting video with um this striker uh very soon that's probably going to be the next video i do uh, i did a little bit in the last video i posted up the camp out video and let me know how you like that video uh, if you guys want to see more of the camp out style videos along with these gear breakdowns and that kind of thing let me know because i i have uh some plans coming up for some some camp out uh videos like that so that you um can see kind of a a few different scenarios in camp out situations and um, those will probably be coming up here uh, very soon the fire starting video is going to be my, my next project and then uh, the second part of our fixed blade video so with fire starting i've got a few different fire starter um, items in this top pack and these are called light me tenders and these are just cotton swabs that have a little petroleum jelly on them you can tear them up uh, separate the fibers this is very flammable uh, this will catch a, a spark from your fire steel very quickly uh, bag of um, waterproof matches and another redundancy back here with a um, striker uh, this is um a little bit different kind of fire steel and i will go over that more in the fire starting video but just the point is is i have a couple different backups for fire starting also in this top pouch paracord this will be uh, this is 550 paracord will be extremely useful to you if you are out in a survival or any kind of camping bushcraft scenario uh, the the uses for this are almost limitless um, so you always want to have a good spool of paracord in your survival kit. So that takes care of the top, uh, the small pouch up here at the top. This is just kind of a small utility pouch. Um, right underneath it, you have another pocket here. This one has a larger pouch. Went over this in the camping video also. I uh, just wanted to give you a little bit more information on what the Instafire is. Instafire is a combination of wood chips, um, volcanic rock, and paraffin wax. It is a very easy fire starter. This will let you get a fire started about as quickly and easily as anything I've used. Um, the great thing about it is it's just a small amount of it, about an eighth of a cup, will burn for over five minutes. So you have a good amount of time to set your fire up um, without having to worry about this going out on you. Uh, it's not toxic, you can store it in your food. Uh, I went over a lot of that in the last video, but I just want to give you a little bit more information on it, on, on kind of what the makeup of it is. It's very safe, very 
um, environmentally friendly uh, fire starter. So you don't have to worry about if you take it out to a campsite or anything like that, you don't have to worry about what you're leaving behind. It's a natural fertilizer after it burns. So there, there's really, there's no drawbacks to it. Uh, made here in the USA. Great product. These are about a dollar a bag. And yeah, like I said, eighth of a cup will burn for five minutes. You can get about four fires out of here. Um, also in this, got an emergency poncho. Um, staying dry is going to be uh, a major concern if you're outdoors for a long period of time. Um, these are these are very easy. They're they're lightweight, and it's just kind of a, a good defense to be able to throw this on real quick if you get caught in a rainstorm. Um, this is duct tape. This is sold by um, a survival company. Uh, just in small rolls, orange duct tape. Uh, uses for duct tape, as you know, are limitless. So I have that with me just in case I need it. Um, one thing you're going to definitely want to have with you in a survival situation or outdoor is a light. You want to have some means of, um, either whether it's a headlamp, a flashlight, you want to have a good dependable light when you're out um, in the wild. This is a Bushnell. Uh, 600 lumen uh, tactical flashlight. Uh, it's got a very bright LED on it. Uh, it's got a lock here. You can lock it so that the light doesn't turn on in this position. It's um, aluminum body. Uh, I think I believe it is aircraft aluminum. Um, very durable, very robust, so you don't really have to worry too much about getting this knocked around a little bit on the trail. Uh, but that, like I said, either flashlight, headlight, some kind of light source is going to be critical to you out on the trail. Uh, last couple things in this bag, sharpeners. Um, I have actually a couple different sharpeners that I have for this pack. This is one of them. This is a Smith's um, hand sharpener. You just grasp the handle here, hold the knife blade, run it across. Um, this is actually not my favorite. Uh, I have it in here, but this is not my favorite sharpener for in the field. Uh, I'll show you the sharpener that I will absolutely go to in a survival situation. Now, this is just a little case, this canvas bag that will fit inside here. Um, you can organize some more items. But the sharpener I'm going to have with me, this is a Lansky. It is the Blade Medic. This is an awesome sharpener. It has multiple ways of sharpening a knife. This is a diamond coated uh, steel tapered rod where you can do um, blade touch up in the field. This is a very quick way to put an edge back on a blade. And then you have two sharpeners right here. You have a carbide, which is for dull blades and knives that really need an edge put back on them. You have, you know, used it a lot, it's beaten down, and it is um, lost pretty much all of its sharpness. So the carbide, you're gonna to wanna to do three or four strokes through these sharpeners right here. Just draw the blade through about three or four times and that will put an edge back on it. Then you're gonna to wanna to come over here to the ceramic, these little white rods, and run the knife about three or four times across that. These ceramic rods are, are less aggressive on the blade. They are not going to, be as aggressive as this carbide sharpener. So this is a finisher. This will either put an edge, um, fine tune the edge after you've run it through the carbide side and polish it a little bit, or if your knife is already, already relatively sharp but you just want to touch up very slightly, you can draw it through here um, without uh, being too aggressive on the blade. And the last is the serrated ceramic. This is made to run the knife this way with the serrations, you always want to move away from you, and you can touch up serrations here on the top. Then on the side of it, kind of like a little bench stone, you can run your knife blade across here to touch up and sharpen the blade that way. So a ton of uses from this. The great thing, when you're done with the rod, there are magnets on either side. Magnets will hold it open, and then a magnet will keep it closed. So you don't have to worry about this coming loose or being out of the um, hard body of the sharpener. This is my go-to for in the field. This will, this will be my um, 
hands down what I choose to touch up blades with in the field. It's a great system, there are multiple options here depending on how much you need to sharpen your knife. So that will be the go-to just as a, as a backup in case something were to happen and I lost it or it was damaged. I do have this that you can draw across. It has the um, files right here at the top for drawing the across the blade. Finally, in this last pouch, this is a um, survival kit that a friend of mine actually built and gave to me. Um, you've probably seen a lot of different variations of this. This isn't just an Altoids can. Um, what he did is he cut off the end of a balloon, wrapped, uh, inserted the case into it, and gave this a little bit, not completely, but a little bit of waterproofing so the contents don't get wet. Near contents um, in here, things like fishing hooks, wire, uh, a lighter, just a little multi-kit and a small package for a survival kit. I keep this in there because it's compact and it has uh, multiple things that I can use in it. Okay, so that wraps up this pouch out here. Um, that's all I have on these first two. Uh, again, as you, if you saw my earlier video, this is just a um, sharpening stone. Uh, before I move on from this canvas, this canvas bag, a uh, couple things, or one other thing in here I will show you is this right here. This is not something that you might right off the bat think of for a survival kit, but this is a solar powered cell phone and tablet charger. Um, if you're in a survival situation, you're stranded and you have your phone with you, this will charge directly off of sunlight. Um, it takes about 24 hours for it to completely come to full charge in sunlight, but it will let you charge a cell phone. Um, it also has, here in the end, um, this comes with a USB cable that you plug the mini USB here in the end and you can plug the other into a wall charger or a laptop and charge this off of uh, the USB that way. It takes about five hours for a full charge. Or you can use, like I said, the solar panel here in the front to charge it. These lights right here will flash as long as it is charging. Once it is done, they will turn off. Here on the end, you have two USB. Um, this 2A USB right here. I don't know if you can see that real well, but that's a 2A USB. That is for pretty much all smartphones. The 1A down here, this, this USB is a little bit less power. It is for smaller phones. So either way, you're covered and you can charge your cell phone off of it because you're going to want to have a way to contact help and let people know where you are if you get stranded in a survival situation. Now, if you are out of range or something else major happens and you don't have cell phone coverage, this may not be helpful at the moment, but if you have it with you, you get in range or, or you get to a place where you can make a call, you're gonna to wanna to have some way of charging your phone to get contact from the outside world. Alrighty, um, before I go on to the bag real quick, also a sleeping bag. If you do a compact sleeping bag like this, um, just I have just straps here keeping it closed. You can attach this to the end of your bag. Use the straps on your bag or use paracord. Any any of a variety of means to attach your sleeping bag to your um, bug out bag. Another thing, I do not have it in this bag at the moment, but um, a tarp. You're going to want to have a tarp with you so you can set up a shelter. Or if you decide to build a shelter out in the woods, which we'll do some shelter building uh, videos uh, in the near future. But if you decide to build or um, you want to use the tarp as your shelter, tarps have so many different uses. You can use the tarp as your ground layer to lay on, especially if it's waterproof, help keep moisture from coming up on you. Um, you can use it as the covering for your shelter. A lot of different uses for a tarp. So you want to get a, a good mid-sized tarp that folds down, compact, you can put in your bag um, and have with you out in a survival situation. When I do the, um, the final video of this bag, when, when everything is loaded out in it, uh, I'll show you, uh, you know, a, an option for a tarp. So moving on here, we'll go to the 
middle compartment here. So in this compartment right here, I have a couple things. This is a Tinder pack I just made. Um, it is a Ziploc bag, um, waterproof, and this is just dry grass that has, <clears throat> was already dry, pretty dry when I gathered it, and it is, it's had a long time to dry in this. I keep this just as a emergency backup for fire starting. This is the UST um, survival brand. These are folding scissors. Um, if, if you need um, any kind of uh, compact cutting tool like that, maybe you're cutting bandages or something like that and you, you wanna be able to um, finish off dressing a wound, these are great to have with you. Those fold down very small. Also in here, emergency blanket. You might've seen these. These are uh, aluminized polyester. And what they do is when you wrap up, they reflect all body heat back to you. So these are a great way to stay warm. They are wind and waterproof as well. A great way to stay warm um, in an emergency situation. Um, they're very lightweight, very easy to use. It's not, uh, not a big heavy blanket. That's gonna take up a lot of room in your pack. So those are great to have with you. In this pack, just a Ziploc bag. I have this um, with my Light My Fire uh, Swedish um, spork. That way you've got an eating utensil, but I also have it in this bag just so I have an extra waterproof bag with me in, in case I need to throw uh, like the solar charger or some of this other stuff in a waterproof bag. Finally, tactical pin. Um, this is just a good self-defense item. Um, we'll go over this uh, also in the um, EDC or everyday carry video I'll have coming up here pretty soon. So that's a great uh, self-defense tool to have with you. Plus, if you're needing to write or, or keep track of things while you're out, um, you, you have a pen with you right here as well. This is a writing tool as well. One other thing, I don't have it in this pocket right this minute, but I'll show you this too. This is a um, keychain that is by the brand Camillus Knives. Uh, this is a paracord keychain. It has a um, compass right here and it has a fire steel here in the latch compartment. This right here is a fire steel and then this is your striker. So in an emergency situation, you have an extra fire starter. It's got an emergency whistle right here and plenty of, or a good little supply of paracord right here if you need more paracord. Um, the whistle and the fire starter are two of the big features I like on this because um, those are very good survival tools to have with you. And that backup fire starter, I actually have one of these on my, on my keys right now. So that, that is another everyday carry item for me. That is, oh, one more thing in this pocket. Um, this is just a basic, inexpensive set of binoculars. Um, if you're out in the wild or survival situation, being able to extend your range of view uh, could come in very handy. So this is just a small folding pair of binoculars. It'll help you get a little bit um, of a distance view. Uh, if you can see help in the distance, get an idea of where you're going or what's up ahead. That's just a basic pair of binoculars will help you do that. And the final pocket, go over with you. Like I said, there will be more to come to this bag in the future. Um, this pocket is going to be, I don't have them in here right now, um, but a change of clothes. If you're on a survival situation or you take this bag with you to work or in your car, um, if you're in business clothes or a suit or something like that, you're going to want to have a change of clothes that are built for the outdoors. You're going to want to have um, good hiking pants, um, a shirt, depending on the season, you're going to want to change this out as the seasons change. Um, winter, of course, you're going to want to keep good warm clothes. Uh, summer, you're going to want to have lightweight stuff that's breathable, uh, stays dry easily, and um, fits the environment you're in. So this is going to be a clothing apart the compartment. I don't really have anything in here right now because I, do, I don't have the clothes packed right this minute. But one thing I do have in here that I'll show you, um, be sure to pack a good pair of gloves. Um, these are 511 um, tactical gloves. These are their ironclad. And they are just great outdoor gloves. Reinforced here in the back. Um, protection for your knuckles. And they have great 
grip covered texture here on the inside, a rubbery kind of texture on the inside, um, help with grasping tools and that kind of thing, and protect your hands. Uh, when you're building fires, cutting wood, you know, doing whatever you're doing in survival or outdoor bushcraft camping situations, you want to have a good pair of gloves with you that are going to um, help protect your hands. Your hands are going to be uh, invaluable tools to you in the wild and you want to take as good a care of them as you can. So that wraps up the second half of this bag video. Hope that you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I will have some more videos coming up very soon. Um, like I said, I'm going to do a fire starting video on the camp video. I did just a, a very quick brief intro to fire building, but we'll do a more in-depth video on that. And let me know what you guys want to see. If you have some uh, ideas, some camping, some bushcraft, anything you want to see uh, that you have questions about, uh, shoot me a message. I hope you will comment, like, and subscribe to the channel. Once again, my name is Chris, and I really appreciate you guys stopping by. Hope you enjoy it. Let me know, and I will see you guys in the next one.